In this video, we're going to talk about treatment parameters. Now, this video is mostly just going to be introducing you to vocabulary words that that's used a lot in this causal inference literature. And so, causal inference, this whole, you know, how do we know that it's causing uh, the change rather than just a correlation between the variables, uh, sort of relies on a lot of this sort of abstract thinking just to really specify uh, what we mean here. And so one of the most common vocab words used in the space is what's called the ATE. And that ATE stands for the average treatment effect. So uh, let me first tell you what it is, and then I'll tell you what it's not. So the average treatment effect, I'll just write this out here, average treatment effect. What it is, is it's basically saying what is the causal impact? So the ATE is the vocab word for the causal impact of the treatment. And so the formula for it is the expected Y1 minus the expected Y0. And don't worry if you haven't seen this sort of E before. This just means the expected value of the thing inside the parentheses here. So what we're expecting y1 to be minus what we're expecting y0 to be. So now, what the heck is y0 and y1? What's the difference between them? And so a lot of this, again, is mostly just around vocab words that the field uses and just, uh, you know, being really comfortable with what people mean when they write these things. What is this not, though? Before I say, say more about what exactly y1 and y0 means, as will become apparent soon, this is not sort of a user manual, like how to actually do uh, this thing in the real world. A lot of this is very much a theoretical conceptual exercise for how we're just, you know, uh, defining these things and not so much, oh yeah, you're going to compute the ATE. You basically, in the real world, will almost never ever be able to compute the ATE, but you're just going to try to get better estimates for it because you're probably unless you're doing a really, really careful RCT with a lot of money and you're, you whole, you know, uh, it, it's very difficult to get the ATE and even then you can never ever be sure that you've gotten it, but you're just gonna try to estimate it. So it's more of just a theoretical thing of uh, what you're getting, right? Also what it's not is, as we'll see in a sec, it's not just the difference between those who got the treatment and those who didn't get the treatment. That difference is what we call the naive estimator named as such because it's essentially not telling us anything even though we'd like to think that it is. So what does this notation mean? What is y0 and y1? So again, just this is some common vocab word used across, you know, a lot of different textbooks and papers and, and even videos. So y in general is just the outcome variable. So if your outcome variable is income, for example, then y is income. And so, the, so again, this context is there's some, some thing, some variable, to make it easy, let's just call it a, a zero, one variable, like most common example just to think about is whether you have a college degree or not. So, uh, you know, one if you have a college degree, zero if you don't. And what we're after is the causal impact of having a college degree. So how much does having a college degree cause your income, y, the change by. So essentially, y1 for person i, you'll often see the notation like this, y1i, is person i's income if they go to college, right? If they go to college. Well, you know, go to college is for the example that I gave, but in general, if they get the treatment, whatever the treatment is, the treatment might literally be where this vocab usually comes from, which is the medical field, about literally if they get the drug, if they get the actual, you know, cold medication, then they're getting the treatment, and the outcome would be, you know, how many days it takes for their cold to go away or something. And so if they get the treatment, then their, their outcome value is called Y1. But if that same person doesn't get the treatment, so they're counterfactual, that's their y0. So that's if they get the treatment. 
and the y0 for person i is person i's income or outcome. You know, so technically, if we're being generic, this that's your outcome variable, whatever your outcome variable is for the research question you're asking, days since your cold goes away, or income, you know, whatever it might be. So the outcome, or, or you know, response variable, right? Indep dependent variable, right? So person i's outcome variable, outcome if they don't get the treatment. And so this is what's called the, the following is what's called the fundamental problem of causal inference. And it's that for any given person, you can only observe one of these two. You can only either observe that person's y0 or that person's y1. You can't observe the same person at the same point in time with and without a college degree holding constant for every other life circumstance, including what year it is and how the economy is, right? So you can't, at any given point in time, know what that person's income is. So either they, at that point in time, have a college degree, in which case you see their Y1, their current income, is that person's Y1 value. If they don't have a college degree, their current income is their Y0 value. But for that same person, you, you obviously can't know what their why uh, the other why is, right? So essentially, the, the whole goal here, and so yeah, so by the way, so that's where this comes from. So the expected difference between uh, every, you know, between the y1 value for everybody minus the y0 value for everybody, that difference is the treatment effect. That's like the causal thing, because that's comparing one person at a time, and then averaging across people, right? But it's every person's y1 is included and every person's y0 is included so that's how we know it's causal because every you're looking at the treatment effect for each person but again in the real world you can't actually get both of them for the same person so what you do is you try to find you know if you do an experiment then you basically try to find two groups where the y1 for this group is a, a, you know comparable believable enough counterfactual for the other for, for this group, right? So the Y1 for this group is similar enough for what this other group's Y1 would have been if they did go to college. And so, so that, that's sort of, so this is again, just vocabulary. None of this is like something fundamentally new that you haven't already been thinking about, but it's just the vocab words that people use around it. So the naive estimator, the naive estimator is just simply, uh, y1 bar, like the average y1 in your sample, minus the average y0 in your sample. So notice that this this doesn't include, does not include everybody, uh, you know, this is not everybody's y1. This is only the y1 for the people who chose to go to college on their own. And this is only the uh, y0, meaning the income without a college degree for those who chose not to get a college degree. And so, so this is just, you know, the difference. This is just if you ask a bunch of people, hey, did you go to college and what's your income? And you take the average of those who went, those who didn't, that difference is just your naive estimator. So just to, to really hone this in, um, here is, just to really think about this, let's say, and so your x, your x is, you know, x is 0 if you didn't go to college and your x is 1. If you did go to college, so I'll say this is x equals zero. So this is somebody who chose. So so this x is like your choice, your choice to not go to college. And this is the type of person who chose to go to college. So I'll just write this here. This is chose to go to uh, no college. And this is you chose to go to college. And then this is the y zero and the y one. So notice that we only ever observe. So and so, let's say that in your, let's say you asked a bunch of people, you know, who don't have college degrees, what their income is, and let's say you find that the average is fifty thousand, and let's say you you ask a bunch of people who have college degrees what their average income is, and let's say you get eighty thousand, right? And looking at this, it's very tempting. Probably the most common thing that policymakers even do is, you know, they just look at the difference and say, oh yeah. People with a college degree, on average, earn thirty thousand more. 
than those without a college degree. And they might use that as justification for, you know, uh, forcing people to go to college, for example, right? Uh, or at least implying that that's what should happen. And that very well might be the case that it's causal, but this evidence alone should not be convincing. Uh, because we have no idea what these, counter, these missing counterfactuals are. The fact is that these are two totally different groups of people. Uh, the right column here, this is everyone who chose to get a college degree. We don't know their counterfactual, right? Theoretically, it's totally possible that this number, if that specific group of people chose not to go to college, that they would have earned more than 50 grand anyway, um, because, you know, for a number of other reasons. So let's just say that that missing counterfactual, again, in the real world, we can't know these. We can only estimate them if we do some sort of, uh, you know, experiment or something, you know, some sort of other uh, regression with enough controls that you've captured everything. Again, that's not as likely in the real world that you're going to capture everything, but you could make a convincing case. Um, but let's say that we somehow know, just we're peeking behind the curtain, and we know that that's 60,000. So now, so what does that tell us about the average treatment effect? Right? Can we, if we somehow have this extra info, uh, so again, we knew the naive estimator was just 30 grand. That's just the difference here. But now the treatment effect, the actual Y1 minus Y0, right, so is $20,000, right? That's the actual treatment effect, but not the, not the treatment effect for everybody, just for this the group of people who chose to go to college. So for that group who chose to go to college, their treatment effect is $20,000. Going to college increased their income by $20,000. Again, that's causal because this is literally saying that same group, what their income would have been if the only difference with the, they don't, don't go to college and that's 60 and if they do, then it's 80. So that's sort of causal. So that, the, the, the actual ATE, but just for the group who got the treatment, is called ATT. So ATT, that's another really common thing that people try to estimate, is the average treatment effect, treatment effect, so the, AT, the ATE basically, but on the treated. So that's why it's the average treatment effect on the treated. So specifically just on the people who got the the, you know, the treatment effect. On the other hand, ATN is the average treatment effect on the non-treated. So if we, let's say we had this info as well. Let's say we peek behind the curtain and we somehow went back in time, forced these people who don't have college degrees and are making 50 grand, we forced them to go to college, and then we observe that their salaries, let's just say somehow that it's 40 grand, because again, it's a totally different group of people and treatment effects might not be the same across everybody, right? College might not have the exact same impact on different, on, on you know, uh, different people. And so in this case, if these numbers are true, then this means that the average treatment effect on the non-treated, meaning for the non-treated group, if you force them to get the treatment, their income would actually go down by 10,000. So here, basically, we have the ATT in this example was... Uh, was 20,000, the ATN is negative 10,000, and the actual ATE is just simply the average of the ATT and the ATN. It's just like saying everybody on average, because if you were to then look at the expected, and here, for simplicity, if we assume that it's you have the same number of people in your sample who go to college and don't go to college, so the expected value, the expected Y0, the expected for, uh, for everybody is just averaging those, so that's 55,000, and the expected Y1, so that's like saying, so this is like saying, this first row is like saying, if you forced everybody to not go to college, well then the average incomes would be, well, these people would make 50 grand, these people would make 60 grand, so on average, people are making 55 grand, and the expected Y1 is if you forced everybody in the world to go to college, these people would make 80 grand. I mean, again, we know that they do in the real world. These people would hypothetically make 40 grand. And so this averages out 40 and 80 average out to what's that, 60 grand, All right? So then the, so the actual ATE, the average treatment effect is 55,000 to 60,000. So the ATE is $5,000. 
So again, what this means, again, this is, you wouldn't actually be able to do this exercise that we just did in the real world because you wouldn't have data that good. You wouldn't actually be able to go back in time and have these people go to college, right? So this is just a thought experiment. That's basically the whole point of this, other than to establish some vocabulary words and just showing how, you know, researchers reason through these things, is to show you that the the actual causal impact, the average treatment effect of something, might be vastly different from the naive estimator, which was just thirty thousand dollars. So yeah, if this if these numbers were hypothetically true, then the implications are that yeah, uh, sure, going to college increases on average your income, but only by five grand, not by thirty grand, like you'd get if you were to just look at the differences. But further, for a certain group of people, going to college will actually reduce their income. And again, you just would have no way of knowing that if you just looked at the naive estimator. So yeah, so that's basically just that. Again, this is more of just like a theoretical exercise to establish vocabulary. Uh, the last sort of vocab words here that are often used is ITT. And the ITT, what it stands for is intention to treat. Intention to treat. And I won't say, I won't go into detail about this and the sort of one that usually goes with it, which is late, which is local average treatment effect. So local ATE treatment effect. But essentially, the big picture about these is these are related to experiments. When you actually do an experiment and when the issue is about compliance. So if you force somebody to say, you know what, hey, you're in the, you're in the treatment group, you have to take this cold medication, all right? You're in the control group, this other person, you cannot take the cold medication, all right? What if somehow the guy in the treatment group spits out his pill or just somehow doesn't comply? What if the person in the control group, after they go home from the lab, like, oh, acquire, uh, you know, cold medication and have it, you know? So the point is, when you have non-compliance, even, you know, your difference in the two groups won't actually get you the ATE that you want. And, you know, if there's not full compliance, you actually won't even be able to recover the actual ATE like, or like we want to. But in that case, we can get something that's useful enough, which is called intention to treat. So that's like saying whether you complied or not, as long as we intended on you being in the treatment group and you compare the difference, that's called the ITT, the intention to treat. So, hey, as long as we intend to give somebody a, a college scholarship, their uh, income will go up in the future by this amount, whether they actually go to college or not, whether they complied with getting the scholarship and going to college or not, simply offering them that has that effect. That's what ITT really means. So again, and late, again, is just sort of, uh, you know, an extension there. Just you do some math, you can then see what the actual ATE is just for those who complied with your experiment. Again, that's uh, a whole other topic for a whole other video, but for now, just I, this, this, these vocab words are just in the space of this treatment effects literature. These two new ones in uh, particular are just related to experiments where there's less than 100% compliance.